Hello and welcome to this tutorial on programming red lines, range of indicators and POD controllers utilising Crimson 2. Today we'll focus on the Cub 5P, but if we have a look through the list outside of our older series touchscreens, we can also program our larger displays, so the LD series, we can program our PAX indicators, we can also program our PAX 2 indicators as well. So today we'll look at the Cub 5, and specifically the Cub 5P. The icons are dynamic in the center of the software, so these will change to suit the particular product that you choose to program. In the Cub 5 series, you will need to add the USB expansion card to, to program through USB. And the PAX 2 series, they actually have an integrated USB port, so they make life very easy. If we quickly look at the signal input, we can nominate what input type we've got. So they are universal for both voltage inputs and um, milliamp inputs. So let's select milliamp. We can nominate our decimal point to suit the application. We can also choose whether we want it to have a display offset. So that, that's obviously applicable to the particular sensor that we're using. We can also nominate our filter time. And you'll notice as I move my mouse over each of the elements, the balloon help automatically pops up. And that displays useful information as you go along. Nothing else we really need to do in this particular case other than to scale that sensor. So if our input is a 4 to 20 milliamp, we'll update our 4 to 20 then we nominate what that should display on the screen especially where it's simple linear applications and um, we can choose a, a, let's say it's a level of a, a water tank and we've got 0 to 500 liters that's it so now as we get a 4 to 20 milliamp signal we'll get a 0 to 500 value displayed on our unit We just have a quick look at the secondary items. This is basically allowing us to enable our min-max. So if you wanted to monitor your minimum and your maximum values on your process value, we can enable that. In this particular case, we'll leave it disabled. Our display and front panel, they allow us to choose what we allow the operator or the user of that display, what they'll actually get to see. So we can update the update time of the device. So typically one second is more than suitable for most applications. We can um, enable the front panel keys. So do we want the reset enabled? Yes or no. Uh, we can reset um, maximum and minimums, or we can reset both maximum and minimums, for example. So let's leave it there for now. We can also choose whether we want to scroll through the um, different values that are available on the unit. So scrolling between our process variable, our mins and our max. These little cub units are also a dual color. So we can actually nominate whether we want the value to be red or green. If we wanted to have a units enunciator, as in if it was litres or temperature, we can actually choose either via a list, so we can choose a particular code, or we can actually custom set the segments, so we, we could have a, a value that looked like that if we wanted to. So that's programmable, and that's then displayed on the front of the unit. If we go to our set points, we've got a maximum of two outputs that can be embedded in these little units. And if we nominate what type of alarm we want, and if we hover our mouse over, it'll tell us to enter the action for the selected set point. Reading the manual would give you an overview as to what each of these does. So let's go low acting for a low alarm. And on this one, we'll say unbalanced high acting for this particular case. The output reset will leave as automatic, and then we can nominate our value. So we might say we want a low alarm at 100 litres, and a high alarm at... Uh, 90 litres. We can have a programmed hysteresis and also an on and an off delay time and that just prevents flicker on your relay outputs. These units are also capable of serial comms so you may want to link these back into a PLC or a HMI and under serial comms we can set up those parameters. So once you've configured the five modules we can then go up to link send and that will now transfer our program down to our cub unit. The reason for using the software is it allows us to back up that program onto a PC so it's then available so if the device was to fail or you to replicate that application you don't have to go and program the unit from start to finish. You can now just open up this project file and you're done. If you rock up to any existing redline units you can also use the extract feature and that will take a copy of what's actually in those units. Thank you for listening.